reportedly told President Biden during their summit in San Francisco that Beijing plans to reunify Taiwan with mainland China. Uh, did the Chinese leader bring up a similar sentiment in their call the other day? And if so, what was President Biden's response? Uh, I would certainly Taiwan came up uh, in the context of uh, of the call. There's not a single discussion that we don't have with senior leaders in the PRC where we don't talk about Taiwan. Of course, it came up. Um, I I won't characterize. President Xi's comments, but I can tell you that, that President Biden was very, very clear that, uh, that nothing's changed about our one China policy. We don't support independence for Taiwan, but we also don't want to see the status quo changed in a unilateral way and certainly not by force. President Joe Biden and China's President Xi Jinping have spoken for the first time this year. The phone call is the latest effort. The two superpowers have had to reduce tensions on a number of fronts. The leaders discuss the ongoing wars in Ukraine and Gaza as well as North Korea's nuclear capabilities. President Biden reportedly raised concerns over China's ongoing support of Russia as well as recent Chinese provocations in the South China Sea. The call lasted for one hour and 45 minutes according to the readout. The White House describing the conversation as candid and constructive. President Biden also emphasized the importance of maintaining peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait, and he reaffirmed the importance of the rule of law and freedom of navigation in the South China Sea. He raised concerns over the PRC's support for Russia's defense industrial base and its impact on European and transatlantic security. <music> US Secretary of State used the 75th anniversary celebrations of NATO to say that Ukraine will become a member. Antony Blinken is joining foreign ministers from around the world to celebrate the alliance, but it's not clear what the future holds. It's a birthday party for the world's most powerful military alliance, NATO, marking 75 years since its founding, the original group of 12 nations more than doubling over the years to 32 members today. The treaty was signed in Washington in 1949 with the goal of providing collective defense in Europe and North America. And that goal has been largely met with no major attacks on member states since the end of World War II. For us, war is not inevitable. 
We do not believe that there are blind tides of history which sweep men one way or another. But the anniversary comes as NATO faces some of its biggest challenges, including the war on Ukraine. The alliance has been providing arms and support to the Ukrainian military, but that effort has been hampered by divisions on Capitol Hill over whether to keep funding the war. Though some experts point out a strong NATO has always been the best defense against Russian aggression. Tear down this wall. Reagan was able to say that and win the Cold War because he had the NATO alliance at his back. Ronald Reagan would see the criticality of giving the aid to Ukraine. Top officials from NATO member states are now working on a plan to increase support for Ukraine, while also stressing the alliance will continue to expand despite ongoing threats from Moscow. Ukraine will become a member uh, of NATO. Uh, we will see, uh, I think, in the summit, uh, very strong support for Ukraine going forward. And NATO's planning an even bigger celebration here in the nation's capital during a summit in July.